Clipless or flat pedals? It's a choice that many mountain bikers have to try and decide what's best for them. So today we'll talk you through some of the history of clipless pedals and the pros and cons why you might want to choose them. It's a common misconception that they're maybe reserved for more advanced riders, but I don't think that's true. So looking at the different types of pedals and shoes today, we can talk you through how it suits different types of riding. The biggest advantage associated with clipless pedals is that pedaling efficiency. That's why you see road and cross country athletes all choosing clipless pedals, just because you do get a little bit of a pull as well as a push on that pedal stroke. However, downhill and enduro racers, the majority of them still use clipless pedals because of the advantage of being attached to their bikes. I've been using clipless pedals since I was a little kid racing cyclocross XC, so the vast majority of the time that's what I'm going to reach for even in a bike park. I switched to clipless pedals when I became a pro enduro racer for that bit of pedaling efficiency to help me out because I wasn't that fit. Now I ride 90% on flat pedals because I like the freedom for hitting big jumps. Clipless, clips, cleats, SPDs, uh, quite confusing. There's a load of names for these pedals that people use. I actually call them clips. I think that's most simple, but there we go. There are a few different big brands that make these style of pedals. The Shimano, Time, Look, Crank Brothers, that's probably the big four. And they all have different models, but also different feels. And they kind of do suit different types of riders. We use Crank Brothers here at GMBN. And they're kind of renowned for being the flat pedals clipless uh, choice because they're kind of very user friendly. And for me, coming from a flat background, I actually like having these style of pedals. These are the Mallet E, and they have this decent sized cage and they're a bit like a flat pedal. So you can actually feel that through the bottom of the shoe. So as well as actually clipping in to that spring retention system, there is a bit of friction on my shoe to the pedal as well. And I really like that feel. I like pairing this style of pedals with quite a big flat soft shoe as well. Obviously clipless, I've got a cleat in there. Basically because I can get a bit of a feel, like I've said already, and actually talk to my bike through my feet a little bit. Today I've got the same pedals as the Ease, but a lot of the time, especially when I'm racing across country, I'm going for one with a much more minimal body, save a chunk of weight and you still get the same pedaling efficiency. Paired with a, a cross country shoe with a stiff sole, you really get that pedaling feel as light as possible. When you buy your first pair of clipless pedals, they should come with a pair of cleats, which are the metal bit that go in the bottom of your shoe. Now there's loads of guides on where to set these up position-wise in your shoe. Personally, I set them really far back so that when I stand on the pedal, it puts me in the same position I would be as if I was stood on flat pedals. Uh, some brands of pedals also have adjustable spring tension on there. It's going to adjust how easy it is to get in or out of that pedal. With Crank Brothers, they don't, although they do have different cleats where you can choose how early they release. I would say for beginner riders uh, or if you're trying to clip pedals for the first time, I would set the spring tension on the lowest or get the earliest release on the cleats. I set my cleats right far back, as I've said already, but also quite far to the inside of my shoe, which brings my cue factor out. I stand wider on the bike, but I don't mind that. I know some people would rather be a bit closer in. I do that so that the inside of my shoe has no risk of clipping the crank because I'm trying to clip out, and that sometimes can stop you and get you stuck in the pedal. I also have them completely square, so some people kind of tow them in or out so they get an earlier release, but yeah, nice and square. Unlike Neil, my cleats are set up pretty much smack in the middle of the four and a half range. That's to get the pedal sitting underneath the ball of my foot and help with the best power transfer to the pedals. The other thing about setting up cleats is getting the right shims underneath them. Depending on what shoe sole you've got, what pedal platform you've got, and how the two fit together, Things like the pin height, if you do have a more platform style pedal, means you might need to space your cleats out a little bit in order to stop the tread on your shoes interfering with the pedal. It can make it difficult to unclip. Different brands of clippers pedals will have a different feel to clipping in and out. For example, Shimano have a really positive click sound and feel as you go in, but you have to put the toe side of your cleat into the pedal tension system first and then push down. Whereas the Crank Brothers, you can go in, forwards or back, because it doesn't really matter. As soon as you get the cleat in the right place and then you put some weight on it, you'll clip in and away you go. The first 
and uh, sometimes the most painful lesson that people have in their learners ride with clips pedals is not being able to unclip when they come to a stop. So that's why it's definitely worth having the lowest spring tension or the earliest release cleats on your shoes. So you just get used to twisting your heel when you stop. And that does take a bit of practice. I mean, occasionally I still fall over now, but you will get into the habit of just twisting your heel and unclipping and then it should become second nature. Probably also worth noting that, um, you know, one of my things when I started riding clips pedals, I was really scared of crashing. What would happen? And actually, nine times out of 10, your feet will just come out of the pedals and you'll just have a crash and the bike will go away and you're not stuck to it anymore. One of the key things I like about riding clipless pedals is the, the way they sort of smooth out your pedal stroke. And it's not so much about pulling up, but it's keeping momentum in the power stroke at the top and the bottom of the crank position. And that way you can achieve a sort of continuous power delivery on sort of steep, maybe loose surfaces like this, is steep leaves in mud, and you're not skipping the back wheel and breaking traction. In all honesty, when I switched to clipless pedals from flats, it felt like my riding went backwards for a little while. It took me a couple of months to get comfortable and then back up to speed. And to begin with, it was actually the really slow sections where I had to keep my balance that freaked me out. But after a while, I got back to where I was and I learned to love the efficiency, but also a couple of other big things. And they were in the really rough parts of the trail where in the past, my feet would be moving around a little bit and I'd be constantly shuffling my feet back to normal. Your clips, you just don't get that. But also being able to place my rear wheel. Now this is a really subtle skill. That sometimes I'm just literally picking my back wheel up a little bit with my feet and sticking it exactly where I want it in the corners. All right, there's some tips on how to ride with clipper spells. I guess we came from either end of the scale here. Like I rode for years on flats and then learned to ride clips, whereas you started off. Yeah, I learned to ride them at an early age, which is sort of what I've done, all the racing that I've done, so I feel very at home on clips. Let us know if you want to try them, and if you're still scared, leave some comments down below, and hopefully we'll jump in there and try and answer them for you. Give us a thumbs up if you love clips pedals.